a life, I have drunk three-day-old urine of an elderly grandmother. So what do I do? <laughs> For nearly 20 years, I've been boots on the ground, international humanitarian aid worker. I've seen and learnt many, many things. I drank urine with a Tibetan medicine doctor. He was using his taste buds as a diagnostic tool, and so did I. But during this time on the front line, I really have learnt and seen many things. The big one is, it is time to take the best and brightest brains to solve the world's most critical social and environmental problems. It's time to flip our traditional model of social change right on its head. Change the players, change the model, and change the approach. We live in a world full of compassionate people. Charitable giving grows year on year. So why is this outpouring of money not reflected in the outcomes? Why is a glance at the state of our world like Groundhog Day in a horror movie? We are failing people and planet. Trying to do good is not good enough. So who are these new players? They're business people, they're university students. And what is this new model? It's a sustainable business model, well-researched, outcome-driven, with timelines. And what is the new approach? Let's throw out the doom and gloom. Let's bring in fun. Our lives are stressful enough in any case. So I say, let's bring in a fun, virtual, competitive game. I call it the race for good. So let me tell you how I came this revelation. I've been a frontline worker for nearly 20 years. I've worked in Africa, Asia and South America. The snowy Himalayas, the Sahara Desert and the Amazonian jungles. I've worked in war-torn areas, I've worked in refugee camps, and post many, many catastrophic disasters. Asian tsunami, Pakistan earthquake, Philippine typhoon, and currently I am in Nepal after the earthquake. I love what I do so much. 18 years ago, I sold everything I own. Can you believe it? And to this day, I only have one suitcase. I sold my house, my car, my games, my paintings, everything. I was lucky enough, early on in my career, to have the most amazing mentor, Prince Charles. I was working in a Tibetan refugee camp just outside of Delhi, and Prince Charles came to visit me. And I was sharing with him my passion to involve business leaders in humanitarian work. And he said to me, I totally agree. But when they go to give you this big fat check, leave it on the table. To which I replied, why would I do that? <laughs> But to this day, his response has stayed with me forever. He said, the check is for the moment. The jewel is them. Their business skills, their entrepreneurial skills, their creativity, their innovation, their heart, their soul. So this model I have used until this very day. But it wasn't until the Asian tsunami that I started to put this concept into reality. What I saw when I reached Kaolak in Thailand in 2004 will stay with me forever. Cars thrown on tops of houses. Resorts crumbled like matchboxes. 
glass and debris everywhere. And these huge, heavy navy boats thrown miles inland. And that lingering smell of death. And I rushed to the first aid tent, because I'm also a nurse, and I started to help. Can you imagine being hit by a washing machine coming at you at 70 miles an hour? Horrific injuries. But while I was there, this woman came up to me with outstretched hands, and she said, Linda, please take my baby. And I looked back at her and I said, no. I will not take your baby. I will not feed your baby. A hand out is a slippery slope to dependency. So I looked at her eyes and I said, I promise I will empower you to feed your own baby. I knew I had to do something quickly. So I ran up to Bangkok and I asked the British ambassador to throw a party for international business leaders. They came and I said, I have a challenge for you. We have hundreds of Thai people who have lost everything, loved ones, homes, livelihood, and they need to earn money now. Who's going to come with me and help? Arms shot up. So they came with me to the front line. They looked around, they took, talked to the people. They went back to Bangkok. Within a week, they called me, and they said, we have a solution. I was excited and nervous, would it work? When I got there, they had researched and seen that lining the coast where the wave hit were acres and acres of rubber trees. Business viable for 20 years. How much will it cost? Well, all they need is a coconut shell, a knife to scour the tree, and a rubber mangle. Total cost for four, pe four families for livelihood, 250 US dollars. I ran down to the people and said, do you know how to harvest rubber? They said, of course we do, our grandparents did. Within four months, they were earning three times the money they ever earned in the hotel industry. It wasn't my idea. I was the broker. I facilitated these great business minds to come up with this solution. Contribution is the greatest human need. And we all want to do good. We all want to help. We all want to give back. But it's hard. Our day-to-day -day lives, we're busy. Some days we can hardly do the school lunch, pay the mortgage, and manage our relationships. So when we're running for a quick coffee at lunchtime and we hear a tin rattling, we pop in a few coins. We don't know where it's going or what it's doing, but we've done our bit. Our guilt is assuaged. And year on year, the same images. The African child, bloated stomach, flies all over it. Nothing changes. And the organizations set up to manage these situations are often weighed down with bureaucracy. Their hands tied tight budgets, tight remits. And do the best and brightest brains run to work in charities? No. They go to where they're rewarded and recognized. They go to Virgin Tesla Facebook. And yet, we continue to throw money at these organizations and think we can change the world. It's time to stop. It's time to stop being charitable and start being capable of giving of our skills. And that is why, after 20 years of aid work, I have come up with this virtual, fast-paced game. Anyone can do it anywhere. Doesn't matter what skill you have. And there's no excuse, it's virtual. You can do it right from your armchair. And when you give of yourself like this, you reconnect with your passion, and also you hone your business and leadership skills. It's a win-win, and we love a win-win. So I say to you, what is your skill? You're an accountant, you're in communication, you're an engineer, construction. 
What is the burning issue in your community that you are tired of hearing about? Develop your own race for good. The passionate young, the mature old, the university students, the business leaders, solve your problem. As Prince Charles said, it's not about money. It's about intellect, critical analysis, heart and soul. Remember my Thai business leaders who came out of that brilliant rubber project. So I say to you, it's time for a new game, game changers. Don't look for heroes. Be one. How do you want to be remembered? Thank you.